three minutes past. Welcome everyone who's joining. Hello. Hello. For this release webinar of the Agile Leadership Team in a Nutshell poster. We're so happy to have you with us. I think maybe we should get started. What do you think, Kerry and yeah. Bjorn? Sounds good. Sounds yeah, good. Go okay. Um, so, yes, this is uh, the crew behind uh, the poster. Uh, maybe we were actually a couple more people who joined in. Uh, but it's uh, Kerry, Kelly, it's me, Mia Kolmarin, and uh, Bjorn Sandberg. Who are here today to present the poster for you guys and uh, we're hoping to get a lot of people in we had above i think it was 130 or something signed up so we'll see how many who joins and also stays until the end so we can hear your questions and your thoughts around this that would be really interesting so um we would like to know a little bit about you guys who are in the call uh what's your role what are you working with? Uh, maybe why you're interested. A little bit of a check-in maybe in the chat, the chat function that you can see, the Q&A function maybe, is that it, Pernilla? It's yeah? actually the chat. The chat, okay, good. So if you want, you could post in there so we get to know who you guys are a little bit more as a small check-in. Um, should I see if the clicker is working? Do we have a facilitation instruction, Carrie? You created the slides. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is just letting folks know they came to the right place with the poster that we're launching. Exactly. Give so it's actually peek. live today on the blog, but this is how it looks. And we're going to walk you through it uh, piece by piece. Um, and we got some agile coaches I see in the chat. Folks are chiming in yeah. to see. CTO, the safe yeah. RTE program manager. Uh huh. Ooh, a Samba drummer and agile coach looking for a new role. Cool. Welcome, David, uh -huh. Thomas, Martin, Danielle. Ooh, it's flowing in now. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Canada, I just saw pop up. See lots from here in Europe. Patrick. Hey, Patrick, good to see you. I know Patrick. Anna. Hey, I know you. Norway. Ooh, Agile is from Washington, D.C. Back stateside. Awesome. Program Director USA. Mm -hmm. Hey, Stephanie from Minnesota. Good to see you again. Cool. We've got lots of folks here joining us. This will be fun. Quality manager. Nice. So we have a cross-functional crowd. That's we really do. nice. Global. Global, too. Okay. Should we do the short presentation? I think that might be. Oof. That was the one that we talked about, right? Yeah. Wow, <laughs> we're in for a short presentation of who yeah. we are and what agile leadership has meant for us as individuals. Bjorn, should we start with uh, the only guy in the crowd here? <laughs> <laughs> No, Men first. As no, we uh, like, uh, I will be the law person. <laughs> okay. Ladies first. Ladies <laughs> first. You or, or Karen. Okay, sure. I can go. So, at the leadership, of course, that means a lot. I, I think that's uh, one of the things that will actually help organizations to excel the most. How we can um, start working as transformation leaders um, and helping individuals to grow and, and change the structures in the organization. Um, I have seen, of course, and practiced probably <laughs> many different types of leaderships, but if you can do this more often, it really, really helps. And it's a, a lot of fun to see people grow and excel. So Carrie. Yes, so agile leadership for me has been a game changer, especially as a former physicist, all about the empirical game. And I love inviting my teams into the fun process of making and testing hypotheses in a safe space in all sorts of arena from science, technology, biopharma, nonprofits, you name it. I absolutely love it and super stoked about this poster launch today. So thank you for tuning in. Bjorn, 
So, yeah, me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so actually, um, the field of leadership was almost a lifesaver for me uh, in the mid-2000, uh, 2000, 2005, something like that. Uh, we were, in a, I, where I was working at the time, we were in a very traditional organization. We were a very traditional organization. So, uh, Buka, uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And one of the drivers for uh, the Buka world is the uh, speed of change. And we can see that it is increasing all the time. I was talking about that it took roughly 100 years to connect 1 billion persons to phone, and it took roughly 25 years to connect uh, 25 billion persons. Uh, and we can see this in every single area. But that is not everything, because we also have this, this uh, bubble ball. So please shift picture again, please. And a, the, that everything is interconnected in one way or another. And it's very hard to, to figure out, to analyze, if I push in some part of this picture or the, in one of those bowls, what will happen in another part of the structure. And if we are also trying to handle this when it is a, a high speed of change, then we end up in a problem because we can't be a single manager, one single person that is uh, uh, sitting there and taking all those wise decisions. But we need to unleash the brain power in the organization. Uh, and please, yeah. So we need every single person's brain, more or less, to handle the complexity and the speed of change. And we will we'll come back to that a little bit later. But I think we'll go further now uh, and we move into the next part. So we will come back to this one. So mobilize the brain power, basically. So why are we still here, uh, stuck in the leaders as a hero paradigm? Kari, what do you say? This is a great question. So many leaders get stuck in that mind trap of being the lone hero that just swoops in and saves the day. And as you can see from what Bjorn shared, the need for cross-functional team-based leadership is clear, right? Change is happening at breakneck speeds. Our world is increasingly complex and interconnected, and there's an incredible diversity of perspectives, values, and behavior patterns that need to be considered. And so this got us wondering, how can we create a poster and training content that helps leaders to start thinking in a more systemic direction and see the need for cross-functional team-based approaches to leadership? And so with this mission in mind, yes, that's us. We set to work using our own case studies along with cutting edge research to start creating this poster. And so here's a picture of one of the first sketches when I was still back in the US, Bia and I were collaborating remotely with Bjorn and the others. And then when we got in person together, flip the next slide, you'll see Mia in action on the floor. And of course, behind every successful poster. Next slide, there's a cat. So this poster launch tonight is extra special because it had some cat love. And and we'll do the next slide where we're all geeking out on dry erase board and post-its because the more we talked, the more it became clear that the reason the leader as a hero paradigm persists is largely twofold. A lack of knowledge about the need for a leadership team, a cross-functional team approach, because it's not an area that people are really talking about. And then number two, the lack of organizational structures that effectively support these cross-functional agile leadership teams. And because agile leadership teams need to have specific structures in place that support the mission and mandate that they have in order to help enterprise agility flourish. And there's a lot of assumptions that we need to overcome. Well, like that, when you get a brilliant group of cross-functional leaders together, they'll automatically play nice, right? They'll automatically work well together. Not the case. A lot of assumptions are made about leadership teams not needing a clear mission or mandate. Not the case, they do. And oftentimes leadership teams are made too big. So there's a lot of cool research out there that we wanna to bring to life. 
and help leaders make very conscious choices so that unnecessary dependencies between leaders and team members don't have to be created anymore, that we could really have and launch autonomous aligned teams that thrive. So that's what really is the heart and soul of this poster. And I'll go to the next slide, Miss Mia, and hand it over to Mia to share some tactics for managing VUCA that our poster is designed to showcase and help communicate. Mm, thank you, Karen. As some people might learn at the beginning of this one, uh, cloning is one of them. It's not really part of the poster, but it was a <laughs> really good trick for <laughs> Bjorn to, to manage the VUCA here previously. So, but of course, creating a leadership team uh, to get all these people in cross-functionally and to, now I can't really read what it actually says underneath here. I have this control thing, uh, so I'm going to remove it. So we have seven conditions that needs to be in place for a leadership team to flourish flourish and excel and to become as good as they can be. So getting all these reward systems aligned. So if we have people from across the organization joining in, in cross-functional leadership teams, of course we have to get the <coughs> rewards aligned in a good way so they can collaborate against shared goals. And interdependency is really, really crucial for the team to actually work together. And as any other Agile team, we need to keep these teams also stable over time so they can mature and become good at collaboration and solve complex and difficult problems, of course. And to get coaching into these teams are also crucial. So have someone coming in, helping to coach the team to become mature, of course, because these teams also will have conflicts and help them to find new ways of working and become as good as they can be. And then bounded and structure. So we need to have structure for leadership teams to work together in a good way. And that's also something that we're gonna look into a little bit closer as we move on. And also we have a way up here to see what is going on with your organization. Do you really need other leadership teams? So this is something that Carrie helped to create, which I think is just awesome. Uh, do we have significant gro growth or retraction in our organization? Do we have horizontal integration of semi-autonomous business units? And if any of these boxes are checked, then we probably need another leadership team. So also major change in capital or other resources, externally originated challenges of traditional ways of operating. So if any of these boxes are checked, then you probably need a cross-functional leadership team working agile to support the organization in these different challenges. And the leadership flower, um, this is something that visualizes the different uh, people coming from different parts of the organization. So we might have uh, people coming from uh, product, uh, the product division as a leader, joining in together with the people uh, responsible person and process as well as technical. So we've got people from different areas coming in, joining into a transformational leadership team working together to change the structures and to, to help the organization to excel, of course. Uh, so of course, then we work in a different parts of the organization, but we also belong in, in this transformational leadership team or agile leadership team. And we talk about agile management areas. So as I said previously, all leaders uh, belong to different parts of the organization and we have cross-functional leadership teams. And as agile leaders, uh, we only are responsible within one area usually. Uh, so we have the people responsibility, line managers, development managers who are responsible of people and growing people, enabling people to become as good as they can be to help them uh, excel in whatever area they're in. And then product management, people working and responsible for the product, uh, joining in to the leadership team. Technology, of course, this is usually something that we work with a lot. So we need to have people from the, having the responsibility of technology and understanding of that. And then process. And process is usually agile coaches who's responsible for coaching people across these different areas as well having these cross-functional leadership teams then help to remove hinders, to make clarity in what needs to be done and to 
helped the organization and, and change the structures continuously within these areas. But we all also need to have the mandate to make decisions. And together, we can help uh, the organization and teams to make decisions in a quick way, as fast as possible, and to know what's actually valuable to deliver. So we can increase both flow and value within the teams that we coach or within the organization. And then having a speed of information to flow uh, from the teams and up in the organization. So we might think of the organization as dif different layers. We have teams, uh, we have leadership teams, and we have the executives. And we can set up the structures so that we can get information from the team that can inform the strategies and help to enable the executives and the leadership teams to make as good decisions as possible and also have information flow back in a good way. So when we set up the structures, we want to have flow of information as swiftly as possible to help to align and to create teams that can work as autonomously as possible. And getting started with your leadership team, how do you do this? And of course, just as any other team, uh, you need to have a backlog and you create one backlog. What are the th things that we as a leadership team needs to work with to enable flow and value within the part of the organization where we are responsible. So we manage the structures and that's what's going to go into our backlog usually. And then we have our daily standups. We meet and we see what's going on in the organization. And if we have our standup as a leadership team after the teams that we work with, then we will get a flow of information and maybe hinders that we can take up and act on instantly during the day. And also, of course, move things across the board, which are maybe bigger things that we need to work together and collaborate on to find new and better solutions. And then having this rule of pairing up is a really good thing because then we can work as smaller teams and do things together and use the different capabilities and knowledge and understanding that we have and maybe uh, belonging in the organization as well. So this might help us to create even better solutions. So stop doing work as only individuals, but also pairing up is a really good thing. And then of course, having retrospectives, reflect, inspect and adapt on our process, our way of working as a leadership team to always improve. And of course, this is the number one most important thing to do. So starting with the end could sometimes be a good way to get started as well. So what is our North Star? And here, I th think I'm handing over to, could it be Bjorn? Right? Yeah, 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 it is, <laughs> it is. And you can hear me, sounds good. I have a terrible, terrible connection. Uh, Mia is uh, sounding like a robot when she, she is talking. I hope you don't say that I am not, uh, yeah, it sounds like that. But the, the North Star, the, the point here is that what we are aiming for is to create a learning organization. So the definition of a learning organization basically is that we are handing over more and more of the uh, work responsibility for workflow decisions and actions to the people themselves, the hor uh, vertical, uh, horizontal line there. Uh, and we can see a lot of organizations actually doing this in, in time of speaking here, more and more and more, flatter and flatter organizations. But what we also can see is that that is not enough because a lot of companies have increased their efficiency in that way, but at the same time, they also realize that they need to handle the complexity because the responsibility for workflow with decision and action, that is very, very good to handle the speed of change. But to handle complexity, we need to curve up and give me more and more power to the people in the organization to have the responsibility for the strategic direction. And that is called emergent strategy. And guys, I could talk for hours about that, but I will not. But uh, the idea here is to handle the high VUCA world, velocity, uh, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And uh, so what is the prerequisites for um, a learning organization? So uh, if you, we, what we can see is that 
uh, we need to the leaders in an organization and of course all the people also need to handle this together of course but the the uh, the thing here is the leaders in the organization uh, should help out to facilitate the learning of every single person in the organization and here are seven tips or seven things that we know that is very good because of science and practical experience we need to create continuous learning opportunities we need to have inquiry and dialogue, a lot of it we need to encourage collaboration and team learning we need also to create and capture uh, create system to capture and share learning both high tech and low tech if you could say that people are low tech i think they are probably more high tech but the thing here is that there's both technical solution and people solutions but also this to empower people towards a collective vision for the company for the organization so every single activity a person is doing during a day is aiming in that direction not necessarily at a specific point in the future but uh, in the uh, direction because we are in a VUCA world so we don't know it's a moving target but also then to keep up with this as to connect the organization to its environment so the leaders also need to help out to facilitate this both internally inside the organization so maybe when it comes to the teams they have to be connected towards the, uh, the, the environment outside the company, but also outside the, uh, the organization as such. And by doing all those six to, as a starter, the leadership is actually providing strategic leadership for development and learning. And if they're doing this in a transformative way, it will go much, much easier than, and of course, much, much better. Please change the picture again. So one way of doing this is to create, um, uh, let's say, uh, a leadership room. It could be, of course, on digital solutions here also, but post-corona, hopefully we can go back and we can maybe create those leadership rooms where we have a lot of information in the, in the room where the leadership, the cross-functional leadership team is, is uh, meeting and preferably, this room should be open to everyone. So I was in a situation a couple of years ago where we had HR uh, talking about their uh, Kanban board and uh, that they were recruiting and they are have a good inflow of, of, of persons coming into the organization. Suddenly the finance person was reacting, oh my God, are you recruiting so much? We, but, but you do know that we are actually losing money in this very moment. Yes, I do know that, but we need to recruit also. And they started to argue a little bit or maybe discussing a little bit, you could say, uh, have a conversation. And suddenly the salesperson stepped in and say, but actually, I think we need to um, continue to uh, recruit because when we look into the sales funnel, we can see that we have a lot of customer incoming. And if we are too, if we're closing the recruitment now, I'm afraid that we can't meet the customers. So in roughly three to five minutes to solve the problem, not the problem as such, but to come up with an idea to have a cadence. So the three of those were meeting every single day uh, for um, a couple of weeks to adjust the finance part of it, uh, the recruitment part of it, and the customer part of it. Instead of having meetings after meetings after meetings for hours and hours. So this was just short stand-ups, roughly 15 minutes, and keeping track of what was happening. It was quite successful, I would say. So please- Jaren, uh, it's These kind of uh, quick interactions and having all the data up, uh, that is so valuable. And I think that's lacking in so many organizations today because we are siloed in our way of working, even though we might think that we're working agile, but the leadership teams usually aren't cross-functional. So I, I think this is really valuable for, for many organizations today. And I've seen when we posted on LinkedIn, we've been posting pretty much every day uh, on these different topics uh, with information and stuff on our blog. And this post, this specific post was the one with the most comments and I think shares. So it shows data that maybe a lot of people find this interesting. 
Yeah, especially also that maybe if they are cross-functional, they are not working as a cross-functional mm. team. So yeah. you can have HR and you can have a lot of people there, but they are not working together. They're working in their silos, exactly as you said. Yeah. But this is also just, this is maybe, this was an example of the operational part. So let's move into how to collecting the dots, because this is a way also to look into the health of the company. So in this case, we are talking about something that we uh, have an um, idea uh, that we talk about as a nine dimension model. So we have, we look at when we meet customers and we really, really want the customers such also to continue work together with us or for themselves. Uh, afterwards also with, let's say, leadership goals, structure, learning, control system, ways of working, people and culture. And if I said that I could work, talk for hours about another topic, I would talk, probably talk for days about this. But it's quite easy, actually. <clears throat> so the idea here is that we create the current state around, let's say, goals. And at the same time, we also understand that we may probably in this book world need to have a wanted state. So how would we like it to be? Okay, so then we create that one also. Preferably together with as many people as possible. Uh, and then we also look into hinders that is blocking us actually from reaching our wanted states around goals, but also what is helping us forward. So by uh, taking care of the stuff that is blocking us, we slowly move and take it and try to take them away and close them down or change them or do whatever is needed to make the positive forces in the organization around goals in this case, to move slowly towards the wanted state. And you can do the same when it comes to, let's say, where you're working and so on. So the, the, another way of describing it is like the, the organization, you know, you, you go to a personal trainer, okay? You have a different dimension. You know, how, how strong are you, how fast are you running and so on. And then you do some tests and uh, talk with the personal trainer around the current state of you. And then also what the wanted state of you, what, 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 how fast would you like to be able to run? What are you going to do? do are, you, are you supposed to run a marathon or something else? Maybe climb a high mountain or what, are, what, are, what, what is the wanted state for you? And then you look into the, what is hindering you in your daily work or daily life uh, and what is helping you. And then you maybe uh, take care, then start to, you create um, uh, some kind of plan together with the personal trainer to solve this, to take away the blockage and what is helping you and so on. And then you can slowly move towards the wanted state of you yourself. So that is, you can describe this in that way also. And this is a thing that the organization, we can see that the organization need to, in the leadership team, need to engage in. I mean, every single person in the organization, but if we look into the leadership team, finance must be interested in this. HR must, of course, be interested in this. Sourcing and so on and so on. Because they need to work with this because they are part of the organization and they are there also to take care of the health of the organization so they can be able to carry the load the business, what they're doing, what they're trying to solve the problem. And when doing this, you end up in a situation where you also learn stuff. And to facilitate learning was one of the key things to get with this, as we can see it today, that the leadership team must do. And if we just take another picture, the last one here, it's about doing this in sprints also, as Mia told us before, to do this in, in maybe short iterations, not uh, wait for two weeks to the next leadership team meeting that will be for half a day, maybe one day, sometimes even one and a half day. So instead to have, instead of doing that, we need to do, take care of the facilitation of the learning organization, handle the health of the organization and the business in short iterations, maybe a couple of times a week, actually. Uh, th and the trick is to do this in, in short iterations, maybe 15 minutes sometimes, maybe a half an hour for a bigger organization and so on. And so this is one part of it. And then maybe have a demo. What, what, did, we, what did we actually achieve? And invite the organization as such. 
and listen to this, what we were doing. Do you have any thoughts about that after the demo then? But there are some um, key things, the key leadership principles here. And I think uh, Cara will help us further here. Yes, so this poster introduces seven powerful leadership principles designed to help leaders create a focus on what will help increase the business outcome of the organization while delivering change in an agile way. Now, principles can be thought of, as we all know, as starting points and guideposts to problem solving. They don't suggest actions like you'll see here, but they do suggest specific kinds that of, of guideposts to follow. So the actions you do choose will drive the results you want. And the, the first one is glorious. It is keep a transparent strategy and facilitate a pull-based backlog for teams to self-organize around value, not pushing things to the teams or micromanaging. Now, this principle is great because it helps teams complete work more efficiently in their workflow. Because pull systems systems, as we know, it allows teams to more effectively manage the flow of resources by limiting that work in progress and allowing those doing the work to focus on creating value. It's all about focus, for me at least. I love focus. So next, Mia. I did. Oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> So, of course, giving a clear direction of why, why we're doing things to enable new learnings to impact the what and not deciding for the teams on the solution as such. So this is a great principle that helps us and pull us up as leaders to show the way where, where we are going and why we're doing what we're doing so that the teams can focus thing on finding the best solutions possible. So this is a really good thing uh, to get started to work with. So I think it's Bjorn. Yes, it is. And now we're back again. The, take care of the business, the learning organization structure, and, and uh, the health of the organization. So man, the managers, the leaders in the organization, that doesn't matter what on what level or function and so on, should manage the structures or run the team so they can make the quick decisions and smart decisions, of course, also. Don't manage the people, manage the structures. And then you can do a fantastic job helping to manage the structures and not the people by finding out what structures are standing in the way of people. Find out what the team needs, act as sponsors. They know better than anyone else what is getting in the way of their success. And we need to empower teams to make decisions where teams can pull what they need from leaders, which can, again, include impediment removal or even team coaching. So, and we've talked about what prints we would like to have on a t-shirt. This is one that I would like to have. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's awesome. Um, so uh, empower people and foster culture of psychological safety to enable innovation, experimentation, and problem solving together. So this is, of course, something that we as leaders in an organization need to help to foster. And not stepping into solving everyday low-risk problems so that teams can become increasingly mature. So instead of helping the teams to solve these problems all the time, we need to, to create a safe culture for teams to do these things themselves and to mature. And Bjorn. Yes. So again, empower the teams and individuals to make the, uh, to, to build the capability needed to take responsibility. You remember this with the uh, empower the people towards a collective vision in the learning organization. This is uh, one part of this. Because when we are heading in a specific direction with the company or the business or, or, or the organization as such, we need also to be constantly build new uh, capability. And, we, and we, if, if we have this uh, vision, then we're building the capability, the competence towards that direction. Not taking responsibility for them and not only by optimizing short-term goals, then of course, because the thinking here is that people knows exactly what they need to solve a problem. 
and probably not the manager sitting far away hasn't been working with them. I have been that manager. I have been trying to do this. I've been so frustrated. And then I realized, but if we talk about what direction we are heading and what we are trying to achieve, they usually come up with much, much, I would say always have been coming up with much, much more smarter solution when it comes to training, competence uh, development and increasing the team's uh, capability to handle the situation. And now we can move on again. <laughs> and uh, the last principle, as leaders, we always strive to lead with vision, practice what we preach, preach and encourage a spirit of joy and responsibility. And I love that part of the statement, joy and responsibility. And this is as opposed to keeping those old structures and practices in place that reinforce non-agile behaviors, those ineffective behaviors that leaders are trying to help their teams move away from. And even ex everybody's wanting to move towards more agile ways of working. And it's so critical that leaders create an organizational context that positively reinforces and recognizes these behaviors, these agile behaviors, which means choosing organizational structures and even leaders themselves acting in ways that are consistent with these seven principles. And so uh, the those are the seven Agile leadership team principles, and I'm going to pass the torch to Mia to bring us to a close and some Q&A and also some exciting things that are coming down the pike. So take it away, Mia. Thank you. So uh, this is the poster that we just walked you through, and uh, you can now already find it on the website if you want to download it and use it uh, along with the other posters. And of course, do we have any questions? And Pernilla, maybe you have been able to collect any? during the webinar? Oh, ma oh, oh mamma mia, yes. This has been an amazing crowd. You've been so active. Um, so um, I have a long list of uh, names of people who wanted to, to mention some things. And uh, one of them is um, Siva, who unfortunately had to run off because and, and take care of her child. Bless her. Um, and she was asking about the leadership team. Is it more important that the leadership team is an agile leadership team, or is it that the agile leaders have an agile mindset, the leadership team have an agile mindset? What are your comments on that? I would say if they would have an agile mindset, they would probably be agile leaders and have trans transformational leadership. Uh, so that sounds like a really perfect plan. <laughs> Excellent. And then uh, I think David is, is up for one here. He is, uh, <laughs> it, it might not be a question just as you write here, David, but he has a, a great comment. He's, he's writing in the chat that um, this is music to his eyes and ears. Uh, and then he writes, sadly here in Zurich, there are a lot of agile coach roles advertised, but they are generally embedded under IT or under the CTO. Mm. And tackling the leadership team first seems to be incredibly rarely understood as critical. And um, do you have any comments on that? Any of you? Any of you guys would like to comment? Oh. I agree. It's, it's, this isn't talked about enough and it, the secret sauce is in having a cross-functional leadership team with that agile mindset who identifies those opportunities to work in agile ways that make sense for optimizing the flow of value to the organization. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And it's, of course, starting to build the bridge between the different departments. Yeah. So look at who do we need to collaborate with and could we start to create leadership teams that are cross-functional? Mm -hmm. uh, so as an agile coach, you should probably join one of those mm -hmm. or start one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> start somewhere. <laughs> and um, I also have um, a question from um, mm, Delek. You're still around, aren't you, Delek? He, he advertised that he might be out early, but I still see him in the chat. So he was asking, what if the, 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 the leadership team itself has limitations? 
So I'm I'm going to pull up his his question here so I can just read it to you since I can't. Um, so his exact words are, I guess there should be some limitations in the AL team team members. Sometimes it is not so easy. What is your approach if you cannot split the the uh, team into two teams and you need to have like 14 members of the leadership team do you have mm. any comment on that seems like a big team yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a party it's a party exactly it's a mm. crowd i think Bjorn has good experiences from this don't you uh, I, I would say um that um yes i have been in those teams also and uh, what we did was we couldn't at the time we couldn't um, break them up. We couldn't. We we had to beat as many. Uh, but we, what we did was that we were using a lot of facilitation techniques, and we had uh, agile coaches helping us uh, to keep <laughs> keep 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 us uh, in the room, so to say, and talking about the correct uh, things that we needed to talk about. We had a lot of breakout sessions. Uh, and so on and um, uh, slowly when, when we were going further and deeper into the agile way of working we actually succeeded in uh, flattening out the organization but one because one of the things here was that we realized that uh, the, the flattered organization or the the more we could um, uh, how can I say, delegate, or oh, we started to delegate the, the, the work to deeper, deeper or further out in the organization to the persons that actually could handle this stuff. Because what we were doing a lot was just asking for even more and more information. So I'm not sure that is the, uh, that, that's one answer to the question. Um, you need a lot of facilitation, I would say. And then slowly, of course, work with the with the progress of the organization so you can flatten it out. Mm. Rome was not built in one day, right? <laughs> nope, it took like two. Mm. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw in some interesting research from a guy named Richard Hackman out of Harvard who studied oh, leadership God. teams in depth. And he found that it's helpful to identify the purpose of the team. And he found with his work with the hey corn fairy consulting group that there seems to be a pattern of four types of leadership teams where they can wear two of the same hats two or more of the same hats at once and one kind is the informational team that's when a team that's specifically for alignment purposes exchanging information among senior leaders that's essential for alignment that's their mandate is to make sure that the decisions they're making is made in a way where they know it's happening throughout the organization so they can keep that whole mindset and that consultative teams those are the teams that the executives look to for giving them information and decision making and coordinating teams that's for the leadership teams that coordinate key initiatives or interdependent operations and decision making teams those teams that actually have the mandate to make critical enterprise impacting decisions. So it's key that the executives really have a clear mandate for these leadership teams, which could look different. This is what often happens is the team type and the hats worn and the members of the teams could ebb and flow. And, it, and it's important to have clarity around, again, the purpose, but also who's in the team and what makes sense at the time and being agile about it. Good response. Mm -hmm. I have um, a couple of, of more questions here. And um, one of them is actually from Eleonora. I think we, we know her in, in Denmark, right? And um, she, she, she got a bit confused when you were talking about how to push or pull from the backlog. Uh, was it you, Björn, talking about that, right? No. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah. I think it was Carrie, maybe. Carrie? Oh, there you go. The, the confusion one of the, here, right? it was just one of the principles right uh, where yes. we keep a, a, a pull base backlog for the teams yes yeah. organize because, around value yeah because she 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 had a a a, a, a question here um if we are empowering team then why are we pushing things to them in the backlog no you should not push no so, no. There was one part saying you should have a transparent 
backlog so teams can self-organize around value, understanding what strategies we are prioritizing yes. so that they can organize uh, according to that um, and not push things to the mm -hmm. teams. So we have in the principles one thing that should do and one thing that you shouldn't do. So I think maybe that was the confusion. Yeah, not pushing things to the team. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> that no. Pushing is bad. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, hey, Patrick, uh, you have a question here. What do you think are the top three skills for an agile leader? And how can we get past the notion that the leader must have all the answers? The hero myth. How mm -hmm. do, do a leader, you know, pass through that be authentic be who you are emotional maturity <laughs> leaders need to self-regulate we'll have all the emotional intelligence skills big time mm, from a practical point of view i would work uh, when i have been forced to do that uh, 10 10 15 years ago very much because i was the person that knew everything um i didn't Still, still um, <laughs> I was just going to say, but you still do, you know. <laughs> so, so I ended up in a situation where I actually had to start uh, asking questions and, um, and and listening a lot. And uh, then I realized that after time, after after a while, that this life was much easier because then you already knew what they had to do, more or less at least. And sometimes, so out of ten questions uh, or ten issues, I just had to work with maybe two or three. So my life become much easier and I could look a little bit deeper into the future instead together with other persons and see, see can we take away some hindrance in the future instead of talking about what is happening exactly now. Mm. So listen and inquire and dialogue. Uh, the number two in the learning organization mm. stuff, I think it's very important. At least for me, it was. Mm -hmm. mm. And I think being able to... to to see um, the structures and the complexity and to help to find uh, and build supporting structures. I think that's yes. one of the key things for agile leaders yeah. Uh, yeah. to enable collaboration and this alignment and autonomy that's needed. Yeah. Um, a, like a follow-up question to that one came from Narida and um, uh, I'm, ju I'm just going to read out loud. Do you have any suggestions for how to turn on the light for leaders so that they recognize themselves that they must change just like everybody else? They often undermine the agile transformation unwittingly because their behaviors and mindset do not change. Ultimately, this erodes trust and poor leadership has been the demise of most transformations I have seen. Hmm. And that is probably true i've seen that many times it's the usually the the middle management who are maybe blocking uh, many of the changes needed to be done because they might not really understand what they need to do how they should be acting as uh, agile leaders so i need i think uh, coaching them having them joining in together with them to create maybe these agile leadership teams uh, cross-functionally and help them to walk the talk um, i think that's needed Mm. more coaching yeah i think so and mm. then we you know open with that leaders don't really need to know everything because i think that's mm. the, the number one blocker mm. and if we don't know we might not dare to say that we don't mm. because then we might not uh, be the type of leaders that we thought we would be uh, i don't know I have, guys have any other i have one oh. last question for you mm -hmm. uh-huh it's from Magsud, and it's uh, he he writes to me that hi all again. Thanks for your great webinar. Yay! Uh, very useful and helpful. My question is: What is the main difference between the traditional leadership and um, the agile leadership principles? Uh, because if we look at the traditional leadership, there are also approximately the same principles and requirements for a leader. And how is it possible to name and put the title for each? Uh, leadership principle created. So the difference between traditional and agile leadership. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. So the <clears throat> the thinking here is um, that when it comes to traditional leadership uh, versus 
transformation leadership is that focuses more into really developing the people. Uh, so the, from a princip principal, principal way of thinking, a uh, traditional leader is the person who is knowing almost every, and if everything, has the mandate and the power for, for you know, uh, salary setting and the structures and higher and fire and that kind of stuff. Of course, the transformational leaders still have this opportunity in our organization as they are working today. But the thinking here is to focus more and more on how can I help you to develop and learn and get a little bit faster when it comes to running. How can you help me as a leader to help out in the organization uh, to be faster and helping the organization better? So it's more of a conversation between people instead of telling them what to do and why mm. and to facilitate. So it's a paradigm shift towards um, learning. So we do know that if we increase uh, the organization's capability, competence, let's say high jumping, then they, of course, if we train that a lot, if we are talking about that all the time, and focusing on that and make it possible for people and organization to, to develop the skills more, then the organization result will come. A little mm -hmm. bit with a delay, but it will come. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, one part of the learning organization thinking, you know, maybe, maybe remember number seven, providing a strategic leadership, leadership for, uh, for learning and develop competence development. Mm -hmm. So, so I would say going from parent-child thinking to, hey, guy, do you, do you have any clue about this? I don't know, actually. Mm. Can, 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 we, can we see what we can come up with and work together with uh, the organization or the people? I would so say. teaming up instead of telling them what to do, you team up with them. Yeah, uh, and you're on the same level. Mm. Of course, you still have the, in the most companies in the world the, the power of higher and fire and salary setting and all that. And but, the responsibility uh, as a manager. But that, that's, that's a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one final request is for you guys to uh, give some examples of horizontal integration. Do you have one? Horizontal integration. Horizontal integration. It was Shazina who, uh, in the beginning, when you showed that, oh, I should have written down the number of that slide. And, and she was like, can you give a good example of her horizontal integration? Horizontal, oh. Yeah, okay, between departments, maybe. Yes, or functions. yes, yeah, okay. there you go. There you I, go. Can, I can give you one as an HR. Uh, <clears throat> struggling in a huge transformation with an organization roughly 2,800 person. We had, uh, we were aiming to do this in uh, roughly two to four years. Uh, run into blockers all the time because a lot of the stuff we were doing, uh, I was trying to do as an HR, was very connected to finance. So what we did, the finance person and I was actually to uh, sit in front of each other. Uh, so we had the desks, desk, uh, so we could see each other's faces uh, all the time. And we were broken, breaking down the silos in that way. So we created a horizontal um, connection. So that person was much, much more skilled in figures <laughs> than I was. And, uh, but I was a little bit more skilled in, in, um, in, um, in uh, psychology, psych psychology, 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 psychology. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we were helping, uh, helping each other in this. So if I do like this in the finance, what will happen then? And I need to help get some help here. Can you help me to quantify this in one way or another? Hmm. So, so building cross-functional teams. Small, yeah, that was a small, small cross-functional team, mm -hmm. and that was uh, the the seed for the rest of the uh, seed of the rest of our organization, uh, our the leadership team that become a cross-functional team half a year later. Wow, hmm. wow! It really sounds amazing. 
So are you up for one more question? And then we're just going to say that, that I we... think actually we have some more slides that we would like to show people. <gasps> so maybe what? we can just go through them. And then if yeah. we have time, we could uh, take oh, that. John, question. You, you have, I, I you got, know. I got the question. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Where can I buy this stuff? Something like yes, that. Yes, exactly. I think, I'm not sure here. So I think it is Manhattan Toy Company. Um, cool place. Yeah. We should have sure. it in our workshop, know. in our store online. So people could buy it there. Yeah. <laughs> we can, we, we can sell it probably. This year's Christmas gift for everyone. That's my <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch yeah. out. <laughs> It's a good thing to have. Kids' <laughs> toys are always popular. So we do have an, a couple of more slides because yeah. we would like to show you something that we put together based on agile leadership and management. We've created online trainings and uh, you find them uh, on the website. Um, and also you could, you could look through the different trainings there. Um, and uh, of course, we started to... Uh, to ideate and think about what are the different things that we need to, to uh, create, to, to actually innovate uh, on management. And how can we build a program that helps people to maybe join cross-functionally to build these leadership teams and to start work with agile management, what we've actually just talked about. Um, so we got Bjorn here. He's, uh, of course, <laughs> leading the pack, uh, working together with uh, people from across uh, Dandy People, the organization, and mapping up different things that we could see that would probably help people to collaborate and build uh, really good agile organizations. You could see the nine dimensions model there that Bjorn uh, told us more about and how you can visualize the program and portfolio and other things that helps people to collaborate. And uh, so we created uh, uh, the Dandy People Agile program so we have different types of programs in an ecosystem that helps organization to excel and uh, build excellent organizations and to work agile uh, across the organization so we got the agile power Up program we got agile management and leadership program which we just dived a little bit into and of course it's a lot more in that program and then agile product management program agile people and culture program and now I can't really see what it says, but Agile Enterprise Program, okay. So how do you work across the organization to build an enterprise that functions in an Agile way? And of course, we've thought about these things in, in different ways and, and trying to find the best possible way. And of course, we've been running Agile programs from actually the spring. We started with a four-week program and then the five-week program, which actually now is going into the Agile Power-Up program instead. Maybe that's a better name since we're shifting always how long the program should be. But these programs are around then maybe eight to 10 weeks now. And we work with workshops, of course. We have the learning platform where people can uh, self-study and also they will have this content available for a year. So that's videos, it's games, it's course dif different posts uh, and different types of materials uh, and uh, which are connected uh, into uh, the activities that we do during those weeks and then of course seminars live seminars like this where you can ask uh, in-depth questions to uh, experts in different topics and then practical applications where we encourage people to take home the stuff that we talk about and the things that we are, are learning together and apply them in the organization and share that with people in the program. So these programs are around 20 people joining in from different parts of the, the world, actually, and different parts of the organizations, usually, and to learn and grow together as a group. And then coaching, which is, of course, group coaching and individual coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching. So all of these things go together in one program. This helps, of course, people from across the organization to start to collaborate and see different ways of uh, how to actually interact together and how things actually go together. So connecting the dots and helping people to transform their way of working and thinking uh, to agile. And this, of course, then helps to build a great experience. We start to learn in a good way and we can apply this in our organization and contextualize our learning step by step. 
And since we can do this over time, this also creates sustainability in a much better way. And to get this result, we need to change the behavior. So by helping people to do this and apply this over time, we can also help to create real results in organizations. So not just taking trainings because it's fun to go to a training, but also actually getting real results, right? So maybe starting up this cross-functional leadership together at the same time as other people are doing that in the program, supporting each other. And these are some examples uh, from the learning platform, different types of content that you can dive into. And uh, Carrie has made lots of good films that you can watch and Bjorn as well. And I have mine too. Uh, so there are different types of content here and games and stuff that we could do together in the program, but also that you could do, use in your organization with your team to actually start to maybe acting as an agile coach or agile leader. And different types of workshops where we collaborate and learn how to use these methods, but also reflect on different things together and getting facilitation from the other coaches from Dandy people. So that was all. And of course, this also you could find on the website. So we've just published today, actually, the Agile Management and Leadership Program, where you could sign up today if you want to have a, a better price than what you will get later. And it will start during the spring 2021. And we will all be there, right? Bjorn and Kerry? <laughs> looking forward yes Yay. it's going to be super exciting so Yay. thank you thank, thank you so you much for joining you. today it was great fun and we hope to see more of you guys let us know if you have any questions um, so see you soon thank you for joining thank, thank you, you. Bye -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.